Got another DAT machine shipped in. This one's a TCD D100 Sony Walkman. Not my favorite model. I'll say that right up front. And you'll see why once I get into it. This one, the guy's complaining that it uh, has some mechanical problems, but the also the input jack is loose. So it's going to need to be resolved. So the note that came with this one says the following. Um, it says it, it, uh, it's got an intermittent problem. It says, please check the line in port for a possible loose connection. Okay. It says, some tapes it will load and then immediately unload and sometimes eats the tapes. And uh, the fellow that owns this bought it about 15 years ago at a discount due to a hairline crack on the battery compartment. He says, it has maybe 40 hours of use. Looks to be in pretty good shape. Um, battery compartment had a hairline crack. Oh, yes, it did. And he fixed it with uh, crazy glue, as he put it. All right, so I'll power this thing up. I'm going to see what it does, first of all, and see what needs to be done to uh, to fix this one. I don't have a 4.5 volt yellow plug Sony, so I'm going to have to power this up with a couple of uh, AA batteries. Gotta love these designs because if you uh, take the top off, well, you can't really because it's got buttons on it. So there's going to be a ribbon cable that goes through here. I love these designs. So I guess the first thing first is we'll. Uh, We'll test it out on a load of tape and see what it does. What happens on these a lot of times is the mechanisms get gummed up, especially if they're not used. Well, I don't know about you, but I think that uh, if we look at the, the pinch roller down here, it sure looks like it's got more than 40 hours on it. Look at the tape guide to the right of the pinch roller. It looks bent. On the pinch roller, but that's okay. I want to see what this does when I go to tape. Well, that part appears to work. What would have been really nice on these DAT recorders is that if they had uh, given us a window that you could actually see the tape moving inside. That's what they needed to do, but no, they didn't. didn't sound good. I sounded like something got stuck. it was right at the end of the tape. This is a short tape that I just used for testing. That was weird how it did that. It's almost like the capsule motor stuck. That's what I'm thinking. Maybe maybe there's a, a grain of sand or something that got stuck and stopped the capsule motor from turning. 
because that's the type of sound you'd hear if the tape stopped moving and the heads kept spinning. You hear da 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 da, and then it went immediately into an unload position and then loaded the tape again. Well, no tape, no tape eaten this time, but I think this is something I should pop this apart and just investigate and uh, see what needs to be done on this unit. Maybe lubricate some of the uh, the guides and so forth a bit because uh, I'm, I'm sure they're going to need it. Because it's going to factory bodge here. Now, how does this cover come off this top cover? Looks like it's this one right here. So we'll just unplug this one. And now the top cover should lift off. Oh, there's another one. Another one over here. Where the heck does it go? Jeez, they didn't make things easy, did they? The second ribbon cable, a smaller one. And you can see where it goes on here. The good news is that nothing is gummed up. Everything's free. So the mechanism's not gummed up. What I was a bit concerned about was the um, the way it stopped like that when it was playing. Where it sounded like the caps and motor stopped. So just kind of give an inspection and see if I see anything that could be jamming it. This chassis is completely different than the ones that I'm familiar with working on. Like it's completely different. I fixed a few Sony uh, DAT Walkmans over the years, and they're all based on the same chassis. And of course, then Sony goes and throws a wrench at us and changes it to a different design. It's real nice of them. Once you get used to one, you got another one, completely different chassis to learn. If we look on the microscope, this is the input jack. If we look right down here, you'll see the when I move the input connection, it looks like we got a broken connection on on these. So. I'm going to address that problem. I don't know what else I can do on this as far as the other one goes. Um, the mechanism appears to be loading and unloading properly. I mean, there's nothing that's binding on it. Um, the fact that I did experience it kind of stop and then the unload and load the tape. It could be something sticky to the capsule motor. It could be the capsule motor itself as well. Could it just be a tape problem? Um, I don't see anything. I looked at the gears. I don't see any cracked gears that I could see from without disassembling this completely. And I really don't want to tear this thing down anymore and I have to. This thing is so fragile and so small. I would prefer not to take it all apart. Just because it is functional, we'll just test it and see whether it's going to act up. But I'll see if I can fix this input jack problem because that was the major complaint. And as you can see, the, uh, the traces there look like they're lifting. Right here, so you can see cracking right around them. So we'll see if I can 
reconnect those and just solder them down a bit better. That's the problem with mini plugs is that they, they tend to be quite fragile. It's not my favorite type of connector, but it is what it is. That's what's on them, so... you got to really be careful with these mini plugs that you don't use heavy cables and stuff that can add excessive weight to the actual connector because it will, it will break them. You can see the crack right around here, right? So I'm just going to bridge that over a bit. This is so small when you're soldering this. That's why I'm using the microscope on this one. Just to let me see a little bit clearer. Do the same thing for this one. Here. The problem is when you're using a, a microscope is that you don't have any, this is not a three dimensional scope, this is a, just a single dimensional, so it's hard to see what you're doing get the solder right in there to where you need it because uh, looking at the screen I don't really get any perspective as to what I'm actually doing. I need to get that solder right in there so that it'll flow over that crack like that and uh, hopefully that fixes the, the problem with the microphone jack. We'll try that to see whether that fixes that problem. I'm going to load one of my, uh, my longer tapes here just to run this thing for a bit and see what, uh, what happens with it. It says it's got errors on this tape because it does. It's uh, got a few miles on this one. Plug this into the line output. And I won't be able to play this, but I'm just going to let this thing play for a bit. That's what I mean. It's got errors. That's why it cuts out and errors on the tape. Can't play this one obviously on the uh, video, but I'm going to test it for a bit here and see what happens. Then I'll check the inputs. Well, it's been going for the last 38 or so minutes. 
hasn't skipped the beat yet, so we'll just continue to test it for a while, and I'm going to do a recording and see how the if I fix that uh, jack. All right, I've been able to make this thing do it. Just just a little bit of ever so slightly. It will it will skip, and I think what's causing this is uh, if we pull the back off of here again. This uh, capsule motor is so. Let me just have to look at it, and it'll it'll stop. Like like I'm not putting any pressure on there at all. And that's going to do the unload thing. and then load up again. I don't know whether this plate is bent or whether there's a, whether there's a, um, I'm gonna stop this from playing here because I don't need any, any problems from YouTube. I don't know whether there's a bow in this case. Is this completely f true? Or is the case itself been warped? It might be this cover here. This cover is kind of loose, and this this cover might be t making contact with uh, stopping the. Uh... Yeah, the pit, the um, capstan from turning. Because that's the symptom I get. This cover is quite loose. It's almost like it's bent. It doesn't take much when the back is on there. It presses up against this, and. Uh, See, it doesn't take much. It doesn't take much to stop that um, capstan motor from turning. I think what I might do is I might just pull that cover off and just take a look at it. Remove the tape first, of course. Ah, crap! I just ate my tape. I guess I gotta pull out some of these uh, ribbons just to see what what's under here. All these dat walk ones are just a pain in the ass. It's uh, one of my least favorite things. They're cramming so much stuff into such a small space that um, they're they're difficult to work on. That's why I like uh, I like the Tascam and the TAC portables, which are a little bit bigger and. I get a little bit better laid out as far as getting into them to work on them. These ones are just so small. And the problem is you can't you can't operate them when they're apart because as soon as you uh, lift the board out, it, you can't power it up. Oh, another screw here. I mean, when these were still current, what Sony had for them was there was um, extenders that you used. So you disconnected everything, you took the board out, and then you put the you put the extender cables on to be able to plug the board back in. And then you could work on it. But without those extender cables, they were just about impossible to work on. Knowing Sony, they've got something under here that's holding this this won't pull off. So I have a stinking suspicion that there might be... Oh, there we go. There's a cap on there and there's another screw inside here. And now this should lift off. This knob should lift off now. Well, that comes off. That pops off the top of that control. you got to be kidding. It's like... I hate to say I give up, but I give up on this one. I have no clue on how to get that board out, and I don't want to risk damaging it, so I'm just going to throw the screws back into this thing and uh, leave it at that. I'm going to make a recording now, and, uh, oops, where's my record here? There we go. Mm -hmm. 
All right, let's just see how this uh, microphone plug is or the input plug. Sounds okay. So I'll fix that problem. Oops. Might help if I set my levels correctly. A little bit loud there. Got a nice light on here too. I don't know if you can see it or not on camera, but an electroluminescent panel for recording in the dark. Okay, just uh, rewinding the tape back to play the recording that I just made, which I probably missed the beginning of the track, which I did. Oh, it's got a record problem, doesn't it? Oh, I'm overloading. I had the uh, audio too high. That's where all that distortion came from, I think. Either that or this thing's got more problems than that. I think this thing's got more problems than that. Either that or my head's just clogged. I think the heads may have just clogged. We'll run the cleaning tape through here for a few seconds. Still something, I got a clogged head. We'll clean it, try cleaning it again. Run it for 10 seconds or so. Oh, this thing eat my cleaning tape. This thing ate my cleaning tape. This has got more problems. Many more problems than just the. Uh, Great. Now my cleaning tape is damaged. Wonderful. Just what I wanted. Still sounds like I got a clogged head. Okay, head's got cleaned. We'll go over to my uh, my recording that I made. Skip ahead one. When you're when you're overloading it, but it looks like I don't know whether this tape's jammed the heads up again. It looks like I clogged the heads. What's going on with this tape? 
I'll tell you what's going on with this tape. This that machine this wrecked it. Like it wrecked my cleaning it tape, wasn't. and it, it wrecked two other tapes that I put in it. I wonder if this tape has gotten damaged because it seemed to do it in the same spot when I was playing it. Just wind the tape forward here. Don't see anything going on with the tape. Oh yeah, yeah. There's some damage to the tape. That's probably why the head's clogged. Well, that'll do it every time, won't it? Yep, I wrecked three tapes with this thing tonight, including my cleaning tape. I guess I got to run the cleaning tape again through this thing and uh, try to clean the heads off. And I, I'll just make a note not to use this tape at that point, right at the end there. It must have got chewed up in the machine. But um, that's all it takes is uh, one bad tape, and uh, you'll clog the heads on these stupid machines. And there's not really any way to clean them other than um, running a cleaning tape through. You can't get at the heads to clean them manually. If you look down inside here, I think this guide is bent. Look at this guide. Look at the angle this one's sitting at in here. I think this guide is twisted. Maybe not, but it sure looks like it. That guide sure looks like it's not in the right position. If you look at it compared to the one on this side, for example, look at this one. It's, it looks to be bent, doesn't it? I'm ready to wash my hands on this, you know, just because I can't get it apart. I have no idea how to get this mechanism apart on this one, and I'm not going to spend a whole bunch of time on it because it's just... It's just not worth it. These these units here really don't have a lot of value, except for what people on eBay seem to think they're worth. But a DAT recorder really doesn't have much value. The format is pretty much obsolete. And, um, I mean, there's people that still hang on to them, but they're not really worth a heck of a lot of money. I see lots of them being given away around in, this, in these parts. That guy does look like it's out of position, just from just from this angle here. Look down from the top here. It looks like even with that, oh, it looks it almost looks like it's not in the right position. When that guide flips up like this, that's what pulls the tape in behind the pinch roller here, or behind the capstan shaft. And that almost looks like it's it's bent down from this angle here. It doesn't look right. I wonder if I can make this thing load trick it into thinking there's a tape in it. Yeah, you see? I think that guide is bent. It, it sure looks to be, uh, it sure looks to be out of place. I think this guide is twisted, is what I think. I think this is twisted and it should be more straight like that. That might be part of the problem. Let's see if I can make it load a tape with the, uh, the cover open. The, uh, the take up or supply side sticking, there's part of the problem. So I've got the machine in reverse search here, but this, this spool has virtually no torque and it sticks. It almost looks like it could be bent too. See it wobbling? See the... It looks like that spindle is, is bent. That's probably why it's sticking. You can definitely see if you look at the, uh, the spool itself. You see that? 
I think this is where our problem is on this. Is this this unit's been damaged in some way? It's either been dropped or it's uh, somehow it's been damaged. But there's not a heck of a lot of torque on here, and I mean, it's, see, it just made it stop. That spindle definitely does have a wobble to it. This one turns nice and smooth. And it doesn't stop like that, like the other one. There's more torque on this one. That guide probably got bent when a tape got jammed in it and the tape got pulled out. It probably snagged on that guide and bent it a bit. There's plenty of torque on take up, but when I go to reverse this side here, right, if I go back to forward, I don't know if you guys missed that or not, but go back to forward. There's there's plenty of torque on this one, right? I go back to reverse, and you can see that the the spindle is, is running true, right? There's no wobble on this one. I go to the other one over to this side. You'll see this one definitely has a, a wobble to it. And it doesn't take much to stop it. And when it stops, it, put, it actually completely stops. So I think we've got a bent bearing, a bent shaft here. And uh, anyway, um, at that, I think I think we're going to have to call it a day on this one. I'll let the fellow know that owns it that uh, this one here is probably not going to be repairable because you're never going to find parts for something like this and even if you could the amount of time taken to the amount of time it required to tear this down and change out that that hub would be worth would be a lot more than what the unit's worth but you can see it there and there's just no torque or I shouldn't say there's no torque there is torque but every rotation when it gets to a certain spot it'll actually stop and it'll always be the same place if I mark it with my felt pen where it stops I'll probably find it's always going to be the same place where it stopped now when I stop it again if it stops in that same place it could be a crack gear that's what I'm thinking is that there's a gear that's got a crack in it on the bottom of this and it's always in that same place when it does stop it's going to stop in that same place right there you see, so I think probably what's happened is there's a, a crack in the, the, the gear underneath here. Of course, the only way to be sure would be to take it apart, but the fact that this thing's got a wobble in it here, it's either, it's either a bent shaft or it's a crack gear. But every, it's, it's, every so often it'll just stop when it's in reverse. And when that happens, of course, the, the, um, the pinch roller and capstan are still spooling tape back into the mechanism so you can imagine what happens when this stops and uh, like that and that keeps turning you can see what's going to happen you end up with a bunch of tape all wrapped up inside the machine that's the problem but as we can see, it's uh, got a wobble to it, and it stops in a specific point. So at this point, I'm going to uh, end this video, because I think this one's going to be one that's beyond repair. And i got to get a hold of the guy that owns this thing. He'll probably just say junk it, but I'll let him uh, see the video and let him see what's going on with it. And uh, we will catch you in the next one. Bye.